Music has existed for thousands of years and plays a large role in our culture. We listen to music on a daily basis, but what does music itself really do for us? Music itself is like a language. It can be used as a means of conveying our thoughts and emotions through sound. Because of this, music has a profound impact on its listeners through emotional responses. In this presentation, we are going to answer the knowledge question, does music contain knowledge? In order to answer this question, we first need to determine what music is. Music can be accompanied by non-musical components such as dance, but for this discussion we will focus on pure music, instrumental music with no additional components. Music is simply organized sound with a condition of tonality, such as pitch or rhythm. There is a distinction between music and sound art. In order for music to be more than a collection of sounds, the melody of the song itself must lead to an appeal or understanding that cannot be achieved solely through text or impure music. Now that we've discussed what music is, let's talk about knowledge in music. Knowledge comes up in the form of emotions in music. One area involves the expression of emotion through music, while the other includes the emotional response of the listener. We can choose to listen to music that triggers an emotional response such as sadness, and different listeners value and react to the music in various ways. A composer sets up an atmosphere created by the composition, which in many cases can cause us to identify music generally as happy, sad, scary, and so on. The difficulty in finding emotions in music arises from music not inherently being able to have emotions. It is the listener that personifies music with such characteristics. Music is said to have an expressive nature, which distinguishes itself from expression, something that a person might do. Emotions are portrayed to the audience by expressing them in the sounds of the music. In our presentation, we will talk about four theories that speculate about how musical expression and expressivity can be explained. For now, we'll just give you a brief overview of them all. The first is expression theory, which states that music expresses the emotions of the composer and that the piece or performance does not have any emotion by itself. A second theory is arousal theory, claiming that the expressiveness of a certain piece of music is related to how much it stimulates an understanding listener or audience. A third theory, on the opposing end, is associationism, the theory in which the emotions of music are expressed through certain musical elements, such as a quick, upbeat tone to signify excitement. Instruments can also be associated with particular situations that make the listener feel a certain way. Finally, there is a fourth theory, called resemblance theory, which states that music is expressive of some emotion when it resembles human expressive behavior, both vocally and non-vocally. It has been proven that expressive music does trigger emotional responses, but we choose to listen to music that makes us feel these emotions, both positive and negative. Listeners actively seek out music in this way because they are looking for music to provide them with something. There is knowledge that can be found in music, and hopefully this video gave you some insight as to how we will answer the question, to what extent does music contain